Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how to use the Blender Data Link plugin for Character Creator and iClone, which allows you to quickly and easily transfer character models and motions into Blender. We'll demonstrate the Character Creator workflow in this tutorial. To get Data Link set up, be sure that you have the Blender executable path set, as well as a temp folder for temporary Data Link files. You can use Detect here to find the default locations for both. Generally, you'll want to use the Delete Hidden Faces option to remove character model mesh that is hidden by clothing. But if not, we'll look at the manual process later in Blender. Ok, next let's bring up the main data link panel in CC, and the matching one in the Blender Auto Setup add-on. In CC, simply click Start Server, and then Connect in Blender to establish your connection. You can then click Send Avatar to bring the character into your Blender scene. You can see that the character's materials and shaders have imported in perfectly, and are now linked along with the pose. For a quick render, we can use Shift A to create a camera, then render our scene. It's as simple as that. Now let's look at how we can add different poses and animations. I'll first add this nice model posing animation to my character in Character Creator, and all we need to do to apply it to our character in Blender is click on the Send Animation, or Send Pose if you have a static pose. You can then play back immediately in Blender to see the result there. Under Animation Tools, you can see the new animation listed under Motion Sets, and we can easily switch motions by clicking the Load button. Next, let's look at how we can create our own custom pose using the Rigify controls in Blender. Start by making sure your character is selected, and then just click on Rigify. This will quickly generate your Rigify controls. In Pose Mode, you can then use the controls to create your own pose. When you're done, go ahead and click on the Pose button to send it back to CC, or Sequence if you have an animation. You can then click on Save in the CC Content Manager and choose Motion Plus as your asset type to keep both body and face poses. Once you have it saved, you can reapply it to any future character easily. Let's take a look at a different render engine next. Currently we have everything set to the EV engine, and in order to switch the cycles, we'll need to rebuild the material nodes, as different rendering environments require different methods of connecting the materials. Under Character Build Settings, you can change to Cycles, and be sure to do the same in Blender's Scene Settings. Then hit Rebuild Shaders to reconnect and optimize your materials. Here you can see a comparison of the same scene rendered in both EV and Cycles. Ok, next let's take a look at updating your character's appearance and outfit. As you may recall, we enabled the Delete Hidden Faces option in our Pipeline Tools Preferences, which will result in our character only having a partial body mesh beneath her clothing. Since we're going to apply a dress with a different design, we need to go back and disable this option to ensure that parts of the body with no mesh are not exposed when we switch. So I'll delete my entire character in Blender, and then send over the same character with this option disabled. You'll already see some mesh conflict at the elbow. So let's give her a dress and some shoes, along with a completely different hairstyle composed of multiple meshes. Once we're done, we can use the Update Replace button to update our character, because the body mesh is the same, we've just added on different clothing and accessories. As you can see, all of the same motions can be applied to this new mesh, and any other character with the same Reillusion rig type as well.
If you're using this workflow without hidden meshes, you'll probably need to manually hide mesh conflicts at some point. You can see multiple cases here. To do that, first switch your character to the bind pose from the motion sets, which is automatically imported into Blender every time a character is transferred. Next, add a mask modifier. And in the data panel, add a vertex group and name it. Now in edit mode, we need to manually select all of the vertices that we wish to hide. Use the C hotkey to switch to brush selection mode, which generally works best for this case. Right click when you're done to exit brush mode and click assign to save your custom vertex group. From there, select that vertex group in your mask modifier. At first, only the parts of the mesh selected earlier will be visible, so we want to click invert to give us the opposite result. Now you can see that our mesh conflict issue has been resolved. We can test out the various poses or animations we've imported to ensure that no further edits are needed. That's it for this tutorial guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.